So let's, uh, let's begin with the first lecture on quantum physics. We will begin from the birth of quantum theory, which was about the end of the 19th century. And at that time, physicists had to tackle with a question, to, for, uh, had to find for an answer to a question, which was very simple. But the answer what not, was not so, well, it was very hard to find at first. The question was, why do hot, very hot objects, for example, like in this image, uh, hot magma coming out from a volcano, yeah, molten rocks, uh, why does it have um, a specific color, intensity, and why does it radiate at, uh, with a given temperature, at a specific wavelength and with a given intensity. Something similar can be said about lightnings, for example. Uh, you know that mm, what happens in this case is uh, that there is a, an electric discharge which um, heats up g a gas, not only, so we are talking not only about material objects or mm, liquid objects, but uh, 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 also uh, about a gas, when it is warmed up, it begins to emit some light at a specific mm, wavelength, which means at some color. Similar can be similar thing can be said also about uh, very hot a very hot metal. Mm? I don't know. Here's probably a molten, always almost molten iron, but you know uh, when you heat up. A metal, it began first. It becomes reddish. Then, if you heat it up even more, uh, at several hundred degree degrees Celsius, uh, it will become hotter and hotter, and the color will change from red to white, for example. Uh, if you think that this is only a phenomenon for very hot objects, well, you are wrong because every object that has a non-zero absolute temperature, which means every object in, in our daily world, emits a radiation. Uh, and uh, it may, may, may be that it is not only at a wavelength that is visible for our eyes, but it can be also in infrared or ultraviolet radiation or whatever. And for example, here you can see an infrared Im image of a boy's head. Huh? And Every one of us, uh, if you're not absolutely cold and dead at absolute zero, you will emit some uh, electromagnetic waves uh, at, s at a specific uh, wavelength and with a specific intensity. So, what physicists realize is that there is a specific relation between the temperature of an object or a body, its wavelength, its wavelength distribution uh, over the spectrum and the intensity. So physicists had to understand what kind of relation exists between these, especially between these three, the three uh, quantities, physical quantities, and how can we predict it? A simple model was that to conceive of a so-called black body. Hmm? Imagine a black body, which means that a simple object with a hole, a chamber, which has, however, perfectly reflecting walls, and a light ray, huh, say, or a quantum of energy, or a wave of energy, or a quantity of energy, comes in into this mm, small slit here, uh, and bounces back and forth inside this chamber, this li little body, uh, most of its uh, radiation does not come out again from the from the mm, little hole, from the little slit, and therefore we can imagine this as a black body, which means uh, simply an object which uh, which absorbs totally all the energy uh, with which we excite it. So the question was, uh, well, if we uh, excited with some specific energy. Uh, we, we can depict this here in this graph. On the system, the excitation energy. 
uh, the absorbed energy will be proportional in some way uh, to this excitation energy linearly huh? and we depict this with a continuous curve like that what a pity that if physicists made the calculation in this way uh, something strange happened then then according to our theories our mathematical knowledge if we assume that there is a linear continuous relation between the excitation energy of a body and its up uh, and the absorbed energy uh, of this black body then uh, well uh, something incredible happens uh, according to mathematics it must have an infinite energy so according to this idea every object that is radiated with some continuous source of energy when it absorbs it it absorbs it absorbs absorbs even more and more and more and, uh, and the, its radiation its uh, black body radiation results uh, well that it diverges uh, and becomes more and more as we will see in the next in the next uh, graphs so in principle according to the old theory if we conceive energy as a continuous quantity uh, well the whole universe should blast uh, in an infinite uh, explosion of energy and we should not be here and tell us these sort of things so every time that in physics you and in science in general i would say you have an infinite quantity well this is normally the sign that there is something wrong in our understanding that there's something wrong in our assumptions which assumption was wrong here well we had to wait for this guy a german physicist mm, max planck who came up with a Mm, very special idea. He said, no, let's not imagine the excitation energy and the absorbed, the absorbed energy with this uh, continuous line, but something, uh, on a, something different, something like that, mm? where you, we imagine that the energy which is absorbed by the black body is not continuous but comes stepwise. So the energy that a body can absorb can be only quantum-like. Huh? Every body must absorb quantums of energy, and energy cannot uh, be absorbed in a, mm, in a uniform and continuous manner. What he introduced was essentially the notion of the photon, and well, the, mm, the word photon was introduced later by Einstein, but let's call it now so. And where he introduced the idea that every electromagnetic wave uh, is somehow must be conceived also as a particle which has some energy according to its frequency. Here we have the energy of the photon, this light particle, this quantum of energy which it can be absorbed by, by matter, matter and object and by our, our black body. Uh, mm, the energy of the photon is proportional to its frequency, of, of, to the frequency of the wave, with h a constant, which is given there and is very, very tiny, as you can see. So, if you do this, if you come up with this assumption, do things work better? The answer is absolutely yes. Th this was one of the greatest triumphs of uh, the physics of the last century because once you conceive the idea of energy which comes packet-wise in forms of quanta and you remake as Planck did all the calculations again and you try to find out what the spectrum then of this black body radiation is then everything turns out to be fine because in fact what you do is well here you see in this black this black mm, black curve uh, represents the old theory mm? here we have the old theory which tells us about mm, the idea which comes up with the idea that mm, energy is not discrete it comes up as a continuum and you see that for specific wavelengths then the intensity here uh, on the uh, this uh, on the abscissa we have the wavelength 
on the ordinate we have the intensity now okay don't bother about now this is this is specifications here but just imagine on the ordinate the intensity and here they on the abscissa the, the wavelength of an object and you see that for every specific wavelength you have a specific intensity and according to the classical theory something goes wrong very badly huh? you can see that here we have that the curve goes towards infinity however with max planck's theory where we imagine energy being discretized everything turns out to be fine because here the it, we have the curve that for specific wavelengths it comes up for example for a body at 5000 kelvins uh, that's about more or less the, the, the temperature of our sun uh, you have a prevalence of uh, radiation about the yellow about the yellow color uh, and it however uh, a body at 5000 kelvins uh, emits also a lot of radiation and also at other wavelengths uh, here, for example, red, green, and every, every, as everyone knows, also on other colors, but also in the infrared. And w at the body at lower temperatures, you have uh, different curves. But we have solved the problem of the so-called ultraviolet catastrophe. Uh, the, according to the classical theory, where everything blasts into an infinite energy, that is this catastrophe this has been solved by by Planck introducing this this idea of the quantum and where you have finally a nice reproduction of what can be seen in reality for example uh, so you can you can see the solar radiation spectrum uh, here you see for example this is a, a black body curve that you can calculate with Max Planck's formula, huh? uh, which is the theoretical one. Huh? It's a very theoretical one, but you can see that it uh, fits uh, satisfyingly the radiation that you can see the s at the, the, the sunlit at the top of the atmosphere, which is this, this yellow, this yellow shaded uh, area, and you can see also here the radiation that you can see at the radiation at sea level and which gives you us also the possibility to see at which wavelengths water and uh, carbon dioxide di dioxide uh, absorbs the solar radiation but this means that if we have a specific temperature uh, we can associate to an object also a black body radiation spectrum which means give me the temperature of a body independently from its chemical composition I can will be able to tell you what kind of spectrum it has which means also what kind of color I will see in the vi visible spectrum and um, this was also the beginning of the chemical the chemical uh, analysis also of stars how do we know how stars are made of well, we don't need to go there, we just analyze the light. Something similar on this line could be said also of the cosmic micro background. You know, also the universe. The universe can be seen as a single object which has a, some specific temperature. And how do we know what the, te the overall temperature of the universe is? Just looking at its black body radiation, at its curve, from which we can infer that it has about a temperature of about uh, 2.7 Kelvin. So it's extremely cold, but it's not absolute zero. And here, just for curiosity, you can also see how from this all this theory we can infer also the overall structure of the universe by looking at the background radiation and more precisely from uh, to the fluctua fluctuations of the black mm, background radiation of the universe and from which we could also make ma make a map uh, uh, and see how it uh, where uh, at the beginning uh, of the universe uh, at the time of the big bang 
how the radiation was distributed and how it deviated from this curve. Because you see, this is an pr incredibly precisely fitted curve. These the, the, the red uh, crosses are the data which are measured by this microwave, back, um, mi microwave uh, background uh, um, measurement system, which was a satellite, COBE. And it furnished us these data measuring the black body radiation of the, of the sky. And you see it fits perfectly a uh, black body radiation spectrum of 2.7 and so on so on Kelvin. So this was a triumph, a triumph of, um, in certain sense, of the idea to discretize energy. And all this gives us a first message for this lecture. The message is that, blo that blo black body radiation can be explained only if we assume that energy is absorbed, absorbed or emitted only in discrete packets or what is called quanta, hmm? plural of quantum. And the fundamental quantum of electromagnetic waves is the so-called photon. Now, we know that everything is quantized. The question at this point, are we dealing with particles or with waves? Since so far, why the, the, the light, light was conceived as an electromagnetic wave. Now, theory and experiment and observations seem to suggest that well, light and more generally electromagnetic waves are not waves but are photons, particles. So this will be the question we will try to answer in the next lecture.